Hi everybody, welcome back, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to be talking about the ballistics paths that BSG have just put out on their Twitter page. Now you may well have seen these already, and what they are implying is that the new pathways are going to be more realistic, and they're going to be much flatter than the old paths, but this got me thinking about bullet drop in Tarkov, and whether this is going to be more realistic, and if that is the case, then exactly how the system works right now, because that's just kind of interesting to me. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm recovering from a bit of a cold, so excuse the very slightly gruff voice, but the rumor has been in Tarkov for a long time that Bullet Drop is currently overemphasized within the game, and I've seen this multiple times across the years that I've been following on Reddit, on Twitter, and that kind of thing. But I've never tested it myself because it's a bit painful, honestly, to go into range and to zero to a particular target and then to shoot half that and then measure the distance and stuff it's actually very difficult to do and quite laborious so i've never bothered doing it however with the information the battle state have put out because we can see the pathways more specifically within the information that they've given it actually makes it much easier to do this calculation which i've gone and done basically so if we jump into looking at one of these charts in particular let's look at sp6 because it's actually the clearest indication based on what they've shown here the old trajectory goes a lot higher than the new trajectory, and the new trajectory is flatter in general. Now, what this implies, basically, I think we've got to assume that the round speed is going to be the same between the old version and the new version, because the rounds are all realistically modeled in terms of their actual speeds, and I don't think BSG would change that. So the only other things that are part of this equation are gravity and the angle that you fire the bullet at. Now, if you look at the old trajectory, you have to fire that round a lot higher than the new one and there's only one takeaway from that if the round speeds are the same which is the assumption that I'm going to make the only way that this can be true is if the old gravity was much higher than it is in the new trajectory this is the only way that you could get an arc like this having to fire at a steeper angle this is the only way it could work and this would mean that before this implementation comes in that Tarkov's gravity at the moment is actually a lot higher than in the new model which we are going to assume is going to be regular earth but it means that the old one is much much stronger than regular earth gravity so let's have a dive into it. So I'm going to leave most of the actual math stuff right to the end but I want to focus on the principles here and split it down to its two core components which is firstly the vertical motion and secondly the horizontal. If we focus on the vertical just for a moment what actually happens here well you have a round that fires has a vertical speed which then gets acted upon by gravity and then comes back down the other way and ends up back at zero again and so what really matters here well the initial speed that the round is fired at the angle that it's fired at relative to the vertical and also how gravity interacts with this particular round all of these factors together determine the maximum height that the bullet will actually reach and this is important because this allows us to determine based on the charts that bsg has given us as to exactly what these parameters are now the horizontal component is actually a lot easier but it all depends upon this vertical piece because when you've got a round that's firing at a particular speed the horizontal component of that speed we're going to assume there's no air resistance for the time being that that horizontal component of speed doesn't change at all and what it basically does is it, it continues along the flight path until the time at which the vertical speed would have meant that it ends up back to zero so that time is set in the vertical by the act of acceleration upon the bullet and then the horizontal distance that it actually travels is then using that time with the horizontal speed that we have now bsg's pictures are all for a 100 meter zero and you can see this by when you look at the actual charts themselves the drop it assumes the round comes out at zero so completely flat and level with this hypothetical axis it moves higher and then it drops back down again to 100 and you can see that both the old and the new pathways both intersect with 100 and so you've got a different angle you used to fire the bullet because of this different gravitational effect between the two and the reason why I think that sp6 is the best round to look at out of all of these charts is because the other charts because the pathway is quite flat it's actually quite hard to read the number off so you can get a really good read of the sp6 number because it goes up to 0.4 on the old trajectory and up to about 0.13 or something on the new trajectory so it's something around there but it's a lot easier to read off than the other ones so armed with the principles of the vertical and horizontal motion, I dusted off my notebooks and my old science knowledge and got to work on some hardcore maths, which I haven't done for quite a while. However, the net result of this meant that I could calculate that the gravity implied at the moment with the old trajectory is 29.5 meters per second squared. Now, for those of you who are not budding physicists, 
Real Earth's gravity is 9.81 meters per second. And this is interesting because it means that Tarkov's gravity in the current implementation, before this has changed, is much, much higher than Earth's existing gravity. And what makes things more interesting is that I actually don't think it's a coincidence that this number is pretty much exactly three times Earth's gravity. It's almost as if when they were programming this in the first place, they've given reasons previously as to the fact that the maps are quite small and the engagements are quite short, and to actually give some bullet drop calculation in people's heads that they actually have to do, you need to accentuate the the features of gravity to make it actually become a feature otherwise most of the pathways are very very straight as you can see in the screenshots that they've shared. As an aside where gravity is acting at three times its usual amounts as on earth interestingly that means that if you were fighting on Jupiter with two and a half times the gravity of earth Tarkov would actually be perfect training ground to let you land shots with the VSS and the ASVAL with SP5, SP6 and some of the other slower rounds really really well and you do much better if you're having a firefight on Jupiter so you can you can take heed in that the Tarkov has trained you well for it all right so what about the new trajectory though what I did was I plugged in 9.81 meters per second squared which is Earth's actual gravity into the equations that I generated and lo and behold we come out with exactly the chart that BSG has shared for SP6 which comes out to 0.13 as the maximum height and the ballistics chart looks as it does here and the angle is much lower as you would imagine and it also reaches 100 meter zero so that means that the new model actually will be realistic earth physics and gravity which is great um, and I also tried this out with 762 BP as well I didn't want to do it with all of them because some of them it's very hard to read off the number but with 762 BP at least this also matches both the old and the new ballistics models with the gravity at three times earth's and then back to normal on earth for the new model that hopefully will get implemented soon now, as I said right at the beginning, I'm not using air resistance in any of these calculations. To be honest, it was complicated enough doing this without including that, but over a range of about 100 to 200 meters, it really doesn't make that much difference with the rounds that we're talking about, and we're simulating pretty much exactly what BSG have said. I don't know if they're using air resistance either, to be honest with you. I know some of the longer range ones have got the kind of uh, energy effect in there, so it may well do, but especially over the short distances, you can see there's not really any energy or speed drop off, which is symbolized by the colors in some of the others, especially not with SB6 anyway. But look, I know this one was a little different. I hope you found it interesting. I really enjoyed myself looking into it, actually. Um, so as usual, check out all the socials, Discord, Twitter, Twitch, all the good stuff. Check out our podcast, Scab Talk, which we do every week. And uh, I also have a Spotify playlist with all the songs that I use in my videos down below. And now we're just going to delve into a little bit of maths for those people who are really, really interested in exactly how I got to the answers that I got to. For those of you who this is enough, have a great day and I hope to see you again soon. For everybody else, stick around if you want to see some proper mechanics. All right, well, here we are. For those of you who've stuck around for the science, no good mechanics problem would be any good at all without a diagram. So this is what I spent kind of the last day battling with to try and get this answer the way that I wanted it. So here we have our bullet, which starts off at zero. It fires with the speed of V and it gets fired at an angle of, we're going to call it theta. This gets fired on a parabolic arc where the forces of gravity, which we're going to label as A for an acceleration, act upon this bullet all the way along its trajectory until it hits the ground at our intended zero point over here, which is at a distance of D. The bullet hits the ground at a time of T. It reaches its maximum apex of its flight path at time T over 2 and the height of that flight path we're going to call H. Within the velocity itself, it's going to be split down, as we said earlier, into two components, the vertical component of that velocity and the horizontal component of that velocity. So I ended up going round and round in circles for a little bit because I haven't done this for such a long time. But when we go and look at what do we know about the vertical side of the equation? Well, we know that the angle matters, the vertical velocity matters and the acceleration itself matters. And what actually is acceleration in this particular set of equations. Well, the acceleration is constant because it is gravity, and this is represented by the final speed that we end up at minus the initial speed that we end up at, because that acceleration, all this really means is how a speed gets changed from one speed to another. So we have our final speed, which was acted upon by acceleration to get there from our initial speed. And this is divided by t in the time that this occurs. So we can rearrange this equation for t itself, because as we said before, the one thing that we know between both the vertical and the horizontal components is that t happens at the same time when the round hits the ground. So t equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the acceleration of the system. 
which means that t equals minus 2 the initial velocity over the acceleration because what we're saying here is that the final speed of the round is just the opposite of whatever the initial speed is so the initial speed is something vertically upwards and when it hits the ground it's that same something but in the opposite direction downwards instead now before we move on we need to look at our horizontal parameters we also have the angle that we fire it at which implies our horizontal velocity we have time t again which is from this side and we have the distance that is traveled so with a ba very basic speed equals distance over time equation we can rearrange this to get time equals the distance that is traveled which is 100 meters which is what we're looking for over the speed which means that the time of the round hitting the floor which is going to be the same as this time over here is 100 meters divided by the horizontal component of this velocity what this means now that we have both sides set to t, which means we can make this vertical component and this horizontal component equal to each other. So we have minus 2 times the vertical component of velocity over a, and that equals the distance divided by the horizontal component of velocity. Rearranging this equation slightly for a, we're going to bring the a up and v and d across. So we end up with minus 2 vertical velocity times horizontal velocity divided by the distance travelled. Now, using a bit of trigonometry, we know that from our diagram, v cos theta equals the vertical velocity and v sine theta equals the horizontal velocity. And this basically comes from Sokotoa. I don't know, you know how people were taught in school or whatever, but um, this is you know, trigonometry stuff. You have cos theta equals v, v over v, sine theta equals vh over v. So we just rearrange this to get to vv and vh because that allows us to restate our equation entirely in terms of the base velocity v without having these like vh's and vv's all over the place. And so now our equation is stated in terms of thetas rather than in terms of different components of velocity. Now I will admit I had to look this one up. This has been a very long time since I did this. I forgot that cos theta sine theta equals sine two theta over two. But we can use that here, the cos theta sine theta. And so replacing this, we get to minus 2 velocity squared over d times sine 2 theta over 2. And simplifying this very slightly, we get to the acceleration equals minus the initial speed squared over d times sine 2 theta. And this basically tells you for a given set of things what the acceleration and the angle need to be. Now, interestingly, the acceleration and the angle, as we saw previously, can be anything right so these two things are linked together with earth's gravity the angle is low with three times earth's gravity the angle is higher so there's actually any values the, these two things could be any value they just need to satisfy this equation for it to work you can plot this and it's actually just a, a linear line so for a given acceleration and distance and speed you have to use a particular theta to hit that zero which makes a lot of sense however the information that we have from battle state is actually to do with this maximum height that we were looking at previously like how high it actually gets that's what we see in the charts that they've given us so going back to the suvat equations which i'm just going to use here but um these are kind of like you know, gcse level uh level physics mechanics equations we have our max height equals half the acceleration times t squared plus speed times t plus our initial displacement which is which is zero in this case because we start at naught um but we know that we get to the maximum height you know we have our our little curve we get to our maximum height at t over two because that's where at the end the height is zero at the start the height is zero and at t over two we are actually at our max height and from our equations previously we actually know that t equals minus two v over a uh, v being the vertical velocity so if we take that and we know that this is t over 2 so this is actually also over 2 then we get half a into minus vv over a squared plus the initial velocity times minus the initial velocity over a plus zero so we cancel this out so we end up with the height maximum height equaling vv squared over 2a minus vv squared over a which just equals minus vv squared over 2a because these things this is basically a half and this is a whole so you end up with minus a half of the original and as we said before from trig we know that vv equals v sine theta and so that makes the maximum height minus v squared sine squared theta over two times the acceleration and this is what allows us to figure out that this acceleration needs to be three times because this is how you know you plug your height in and that's exactly what you get when you do the maths I might have gone slightly mad, but at least we're getting realistic bullet physics.